statistics. Uh, there's a question from my uh, AP stats class. We've got uh, a situation where we're looking at iPods, and these two facts are known right here, right from the start, that the overall average number of songs on all possible iPods is 450 songs, and the standard deviation would be 100 songs. That's looking at individual iPods. Now, if we started looking at collections of 100 iPods or a simple random sample of 100 iPods, you would expect that average to be pretty close to 450 songs. So it's a healthy size sample. It's greater than 30. The question is asking you to provide the sampling distribution. The sampling distribution is the collection of all possible samples of 100 iPods, something that's impossible to actually collect. So since it's something that's impossible, what we, re what we rely on is we rely on the theory, the theory from the central limit theorem. It's also known as the fundamental theorem of statistics. It says that if we're given a situation like this, that the collection of all possible collections or samples of 100 iPods would be perfectly normal, which is a huge bonus to us because since it's normal, we can actually use the normal CDF command and we can actually calculate probabilities. We'll know that it's perfectly normal. We'll know where the center is too. The formula that's given on the exam is that the sampling distribution's average is equal to the true average, which in this case is given, 450 songs. So we know where the center of this normal curve is. We also know what the standard deviation is as well. We know the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is equal to the standard deviation of the individuals divided by the square root of the number that's in our sample. In this case here, the standard deviation of individual iPods is 100. And we're also dealing with 100. It just so happens we're dealing with 100 for the size of our sample. What we get is a 10-song standard deviation. That makes a lot of sense. It's very likely that if you have a collection of 100 iPods, that you're probably going to have an a sample average that's very, very close to 450. Looking at individual iPods, the standard deviation is 100, which means it's very widespread. You know, it's very common that if you looked at an individual's iPod, you get maybe between 350 to 550 on, on, the, um, on the playlist or in the menus. But if you're dealing with collections of 100, that's going to shrink down the standard deviation by quite a bit. Originally it was 100, now we're looking at collections, so it's, very li it's not very likely that we're going to stray away from the 450 as a collective average of 100 iPods. So what we can do now, since we know the standard deviation, is we can mark up the normal curve. And what do we know? We know that because it's a normal curve, approximately 68% of all collections of 100 iPods will have averages between 440 and, 400 and 460. If we march down another 10 in each direction, we know that 90, about 95% of, of all iPods that we, 100 iPods that we examine will have um, a collective average between 430 and 470. And you can even march out even farther than that. And the, the general rule of thumb is about 99.7% of the data would be, or the statistics would appear between 420 and 480. Okay, if you're not given those nice even breaks like that, you can also determine the probabilities using normal CDF. So for example, what's the probability that we get 100 iPods uh, whose average is somewhere between, let's say, 400 songs to 500 songs? 
to actually calculate that, you can use the graphing calculator and type in the command normal CDF and then give it the four arguments that it needs. The range from 400 to 500. Then it's missing two numbers here. And we know that the average was 450 and that the standard deviation we're dealing with here is 10 since we're no longer talking about individual. There we go, 10. We're not only talking about individual um, iPods, but collections of 100. If you dial that into your calculator, tells you that there's about a 99% chance that that's going to be true. Whole bunch of nines. Makes sense too if you take a look at the actual picture. We're talking about from 400, which is way down here, all the way up to 500. Basically includes the entire normal curve except for a little section right here. There's a very good chance. Remember on the exam too, just using calculator speak like this won't, won't earn you full credit. Every time you do a normal curve calculation, you want to draw the normal curve and make sure that you outline exactly what the average and the standard deviation is. Sometimes it's convenient to write it in this notation too. You could write N450, 10, and that communicates the average and the standard deviation. Well, that's one example involving averages. Let's take a look at an example in the next video of taking a look at proportions or percentages.